Hello, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics. Today's video will be a guide for creating a robot drivetrain in a similar style to my spinner design guide series. Depending how long it gets, I might end up expanding on this in a second video, but today I wanted to share a document I created as well as a calculator spreadsheet to make things easier for everyone. I'll explain how to use them and how some simple math can result in a much better optimized drive setup for your robot. My approach here, at the start, is going to be step by step. What do you need to know or find out to create a new bot design from scratch? I use these calculations for pretty much every bot that I've designed at some point or another. The idea here is to figure out what motor and gear ratio to use to power the robot's wheels and how to actually physically build that system into a robot. If you're working on a new bot design now, you can follow along with me and plug in the values you're using as we go. So, main parameters that determine the needed motor slash gearing. Number one, weight class. How much weight can be dedicated to the drivetrain and how much weight can you really spend on just the motors and wheels and mechanics, etc. Number two, drive strategy, control, wedge, or other. Speed is actually a lower priority for a control bot than a vertical spinner because spinners need to achieve good bite and escape from a bad position. They also need to be able to outdrive control bots in order to get away. Pushing power and low end torque are critical for control bots, especially without wedges. Generally, a wedge, lifter, grabber, or other control bot will want more drive power than a spinner. So what exactly are speed, torque, and power, and how do they relate to motors? Well, drive power is simply a function of desired speed and torque for your chosen wheels. You can kind of think of it as speed times torque, but it, depending on what use it, units you use, you might not end up with an actual unit of power. But in terms of electricity, power is measured in watts, and it is simply volts times amps. And with a motor, voltage is related to the speed, and current, or amps, are related to the torque. According to Ask Aaron's drivetrain guidelines, you'll want at least one and a half to two times the torque required to spin the robot's wheels in order to prevent stalling and overloading the drive motors while pushing an opponent into or against a wall, or just in general. Note, more torque with a reasonable speed is much better than having a stupid fast top speed. Having the ability to go 100 miles an hour if you only have room to accelerate to 20 miles an hour means you're leaving a lot of torque and motor power on the table. Combat arenas are small. Acceleration and pushing power is often far more important than speed, and both are only related to torque and traction. This is very important and something that seems to be often overlooked with a lot of people that are converting to brushless drive. You see very often somebody saying, oh, this is so fast, I have to limit it to only using like 50% of the throttle. Well, that means that you're using a gear ratio that's half of what it should be. Essentially, what you're able to do with this whole spreadsheet is check if a motor is and gear ratio combination is good enough, or if you have decided on a specific motor, see what is the minimum gear ratio that you need in order to operate it in safe parameters for the robot. All right, so I want to explain how this spreadsheet works and how you can make it work for you without going too in depth into the math, though ultimately all you're really doing is multiplying numbers together and doing unit conversions. This Calculator spreadsheet is based off of a couple of resources I'll have linked at the bottom of my drive guide, which I'll share in the description of this video. Essentially, the idea here is you need to know all of the values that are in green, and you can input them, and it will calculate all the values that are in orange for you based on those inputs. So right now I have for an example what my setup is for Draconid with this brushless motor info table here. So with Draconid, my 12 pound undercutter saw robot. I'm using three inch wheels. This coefficient of friction value is an estimate. It just has to be between zero and one. 0.9 is probably a rather, rather high estimate, but that'll make sure that we're even more conservative with our torque values. The robot's effective weight is 12 pounds. I'm not using any magnets for downforce or anything crazy like that, but if you were to have some sort of added downforce by whatever means, you would want to add that to your robot's actual weight and put it in here. I also, if you're trying to work in metric, have all these handy unit conversion calculators down here. So if your robot is like, I don't know, 13.5 kilograms, then now you know it's exactly 29.762 pounds and you can change the value accordingly. So for the number of wheels and drive motors, this is the total number of wheels and the total number of drive motors. 
I will also be showing how this spreadsheet will play well with the Team Tentacles torque calculator later on. And with that, you will actually be using motors per side. So just keep in mind that here it's different, it's the total number of motors. The reason I did it this way is because my spreadsheet will actually allow you to calculate things like if you're doing a crazy melty brain with only three wheels and like three motors, um, there's no like per side thing. You can't just say that there's two sides to the robot. So this way it's a little more flexible. Anyway, so I have 20% added to the weight per wheel just as a little buffer, again, to make sure that you don't go too undersized. Um, and also there's one other thing of note. So whenever you put in, there's two wheels, I'm assuming that the weight per wheel is the same as with four wheels, but you'll note that the torque value that you need is double for four wheels as it is for two wheels. And that's because in the case of a wedge bot with two wheel drive, you have two wheels in the back, which split 50% of the weight of the robot and a wedge in the front, which has the other 50% of the weight of the robot on it. But that's just dragging on the ground. So with four wheels, you essentially need each wheel to be taking 25%. So the total amount of torque required to spin them is the amount of torque required to spin four tires instead of two. Hence it being double that when you have two wheels. But anyway, with Draconid, I have a four wheel drive bot with two drive motors. So the calculated torque to spin the wheels is one, about one Newton meter or 155.52 ounce force inches. These numbers aren't particularly important until we get into the motor info table. So you'll see here, I have these things that say good. This will, and this one says very slow. These are just little checks that will automatically change. So if I choose a ratio that's too low, it'll give me a warning that this is too low. Um, but otherwise they don't do anything. You still have to input numbers into all of these. So for Draconid, I'm running on 6S. You can see in my LiPo cell table down here, that's about 22 volts. Um, the stall current is 25 amps for the motors that I'm using, which are Race Star 4114 Outrunners. They are 400 kV. And the, this number and this number are both calculated, you'll notice, which is a difference from the brush motor info. So here, this number is calculated based on, I'm sorry, this number here, the metric stall torque in Newton meters is calculated based on a formula that I found in a research paper where a guy did some actual empirical tests with various brushless motors. And he was able to determine that using the motor's KV and stall current, you can pretty well estimate what the stall torque of that motor is by just multiplying by a conversion factor of 8.3 to get Newton meters out of it. Um, that paper is also linked in the sources below in my drive guide if you want to check it out. I think it was pretty well done research despite using somewhat of a janky setup. But in any case, this seems like a pretty fair estimate. So I'm using it. And then I just convert to ounce force inches for this for the consistency's sake, because a lot of the brushed motors you buy, at least on American sites, list imperial stall torque in ounce force inches. And again, you can do the conversions if you want here, and it automatically converts over to Newton meters. Just know that if you type in a number in Newton meters here, it will not be factored into the calculations. You need to make sure you type it in ounce force inches there for a brush motor. But anyway, I digress. So the bot voltage here, basically this is allowing you to say you're overvolting the motor. So if I was running at like an 8 cell instead of, I would say it's like 30 volts. Now it's gonna multiply the RPM because, or it's gonna increase the RPM because I'm going 30 times 400 kV instead of 22 times 400 kV. And you'll note that the ratio doesn't change, but all of these numbers do. So the speed is changing because it's dependent on this max RPM here. So I'll go back to 22 and you can see how those adjust accordingly. So the way that I have Draconid set up, I use about a 4.0 ratio. It's a little bit higher than that. It might be like 4.25, but something along these lines. And you can see all these numbers update. Uh, I'm directly calculating feet per second with this formula up here, if you really want to dig into it, and then doing unit conversions for these two. And then these values are just copied from uh, the other things here, with the exception of this, which is just the stall torque divided by the stall current because these can be pasted into the Team Tentacles torque and amp hour calculator in order to get more information on how fast your robot will accelerate. So you can see in this case, I needed at least a 3.176 ratio in order to be at one and a half times the torque to spin the wheels of the robot. Um, so the motor itself has an estimated stall torque of 0.51 or 0.52 Newton meters. And to spin the wheels, I need one Newton meter, but because I'm, I'm getting 1.5x so that I have a bit of margin for error and to prevent the motors from completely stalling out every time I need to accelerate from a dead stop or push something against a wall, I'm basically using 1.5 
as a safety factor. So I multiply that by 1.5 and it goes from two to three. So that's basically the minimum recommendation, but it's already a fairly safe number. So anything higher than that is like pretty much assured to be good. Ask Aaron recommends anything between 1.5 to two times, um, but beyond that, you're still perfectly fine. So basically I have this check here that'll just say, if you go below that recommendation, it's too low, but if you're above it, then you're fine. And then these numbers are basically the resultant theoretical top speed that you get with this chosen ratio. You can also just say this is equal to that. And then if you basically can adjust what motor parameters you're using, if you want to find out what motor would be good, basically, just um, say you want to make sure you have a ton of extra drive power. If like I had a 400 kV motor with a stalker and a 50 amps, then my ratio that I need as a bare minimum is half as much, which means my speed is now ludicrous. So now I could say, well, if I use this motor with a ratio of like the one I had before, like 4.25, my top speed is a more reasonable 18 miles an hour, but I've got a crap ton more torque. So I'll now use the TM Technical Torque calculator to explain what the difference is basically between say a 25 amp stall motor with the same parameters and a 50 amp stall motor with the same parameters. So if I have a 25 amp stall ver and I'm using a 4.25 ratio versus 50 amp stall with a 4.25 ratio, these numbers don't seem to change at all. Um, but you'll see with the TM Torque Technical Calculator, that's because it's the acceleration that really changes. So let's move on to that. So in this case, I have 402.938 that I'm going to copy. So here is the TM Technical Torque Calculator. So you can see I already entered most of these values. 2.938 is the torque constant, ounce inches per amp. It's a 12 pound robot with one motor per side. And the gear ratio is four, let's say 4.25, just to make it exactly the same as before. Wheel diameter three inches, tire coefficient of friction, I'll make it back to 0.9 because that's what it is in the calculator. So you can see here, basically, the amps to spin the wheels is only about 10 amps. Um, now, the acceleration calculator is where we really get interesting stuff. So with the acceleration calculator, we can see that my technically achievable top speed is 18.4 miles an hour, right? And if we look back at my table here, I have the same thing, 18.4, 479, whatever. However, the maximum speed that you'll actually ever get to is much less than that because the arena is small. So if I'm in, if I'm at Motorama, I think it's like a, 50, a 16 foot square arena, it takes 80 feet for me to get to my top speed because the robot can't accelerate that fast. So that means that realistically, if I'm going from side to side in the box, I'm only ever actually going to get to 11.8 miles an hour. And if I'm going corner to corner, I'm only ever going to get 13.2 miles an hour because the robot accelerates too slowly to get anywhere close to this speed. All right, I wanna try and explain a somewhat more complicated topic, which it took me a while to figure out a good way to actually visualize it in a way that like makes intuitive sense. But basically what I came up with is just making a simple graph that better shows the relationship between a motor's speed and its torque, and therefore ultimately its power. So basically, Let's say that we have a theoretical motor like this. So a theoretical motor has a stall current of 50 amps, a peak RPM of 10,000 RPM, and its torque constant is going to remain the same. So its torque constant is such that at 50 amps, it produces two Newton meters of torque. Um, so this is just a speed percentage. And this is really crucial. Just like basically we see here, at a certain point, we have a maximum amount of traction that the wheel can generate because there's only so much weight on the wheel and the wheel only has so much traction. So basically, this minimum torque to spin the wheel doesn't change. It's one Newton meter here. And for my motor example in this, let's say that we're producing that one Newton meter, or whatever it is, at 10 amps. So essentially at a certain torque value, in this case it's 0.4 newton meters, 
we are breaking traction with the ground and the wheel starts to free spin. And basically that means we don't get any more acceleration out of it. So this motor produces that torque at 10 amps. And if we change the peak current, which is basically saying that all right, I'm going to turn this from 50 amp stall to 25 amp stall. So now basically this motor is now half as powerful. So I didn't change the scales on this graph at all. You can see basically what happens is the RPM remains the same. So the peak speed is still 10,000 RPM because it's still the same KV. We just went from 50 to 25. So you see in green here, I highlighted all the current values that exist from 10 and under. And you can see how those change in relation to the speed. So essentially what we're looking at here is this line at 10 amps is staying exactly the same place. But when we go from 25 amp stall to 50 amp stall, the point at which these lines intersect it move to the right. So in other words, with a more powerful motor, which has a higher stall current, all else being equal, the point at which it is generating enough torque to break traction happens at a higher RPM. So in this case, at 25 amps, we are generating enough torque to break traction at about 5,000 RPM. And then when we push it to a 50 amp stall motor, so we're doubling the motor power, we have moved that point up to 7,500 RPM. So this essentially means that the motor can spin about 50% faster and still maintain the same amount of traction. This is why you're able to accelerate faster or for longer or whatever you want to call it with a more powerful motor, even though the motor isn't necessarily capable of spinning any faster. Your robot is able to get from point A at a standstill to point B much faster with a more powerful motor that can push more current and generate more torque at therefore a higher RPM. So basically, it's, a, it's not about generating more stall torque. It's about generating enough torque to get traction at a higher speed. All right, now that we have a better understanding of how exactly this works, let me show you how it actually impacts things using a real motor example of the one that I use in Draconid and then a theoretical motor that has twice the stall current, but the same torque constant and same KV. Um, so basically, in my example that I have here, if we look at the acceleration calculator, uh, we're on an 8-foot box, time side to side is 1 second, top speed side to side is 9.2 miles an hour. It will take 80.9 feet to get to top speed. Now, if I change this to a 50 amp stall motor, and we look at the acceleration calculator again, in an 8-foot box, it only takes 54.3 feet to get to top speed instead of 80. We're getting to, and we're crossing side to side in 0.81 seconds instead of like a bit over a second. So that is all because of the factors I just talked about with that graph before, um, where essentially the motor is able to maintain the maximum amount of traction and therefore a maximum amount of acceleration at higher speeds, which in like in effect means that it can accelerate faster. It's, it's weird to say that because technically it's just accelerating at the maximum rate for longer or while the wheels are spinning at a higher speed. Um, but you can think of it as accelerating faster for all intents and purposes because ultimately that's how it presents itself in terms of you can actually get to your top speed faster, as in in less time, and you can get from one point to another in less time. Like I said at the start, I've written up an entire guide that I've linked below which should help out any builders looking to learn more about drivetrain mechanics. I think this video is long enough already, so let me know in the comments if you want to see me go over the rest of the document with examples from existing robots, be they my own or other popular ones. Also comment with any questions you may have, and make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and want to see more. Thanks for watching!